Before starting the video, consider joining my new Discord server. Since this is a new Discord, you can help shape a great community, so come check it out in the link down below in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get into this week's video. So what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pups Off MTG. Glad to have you here. Today we're going to go over Ultra Magnus Tactician and Ultra Magnus Armored Carrier. So far out of the Transformers series, I have done three deck techs. If you want to go check them out, I'll post them on the links above here. I still hold pretty strongly that Megatron Tyrant is my favorite of the Transformers. I don't know, it's just my opinion. Who's your favorite Transformer that has been spoiled so far? Let me know down below in the comments. But today we're going over the Naya Commander, which is Ultra Magnus. He was essentially Optimus Prime's replacement because Optimus Prime did die in the first movie, so later on they replaced him with Ultra Magnus. Kind of almost as a clone of Optimus Prime, but honestly I'm glad they had Optimus Prime come back because I like him a little better. Even though Ultra Magnus is a good leader i kind of see him more as a regular soldier in my opinion so he is a naya commander and he does have that war 2 ability and more than meets the eye cost as well and also whenever he attacks you may put an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking if you do convert ultra magnus at the end of combat and on his backside he has living metal and haste whenever ultra magnus attacks attacking creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn if those creatures have total power eight or greater convert ultra magnus so the game plan is pretty simple we want to have a a lot of big artifact creatures in our deck to smash face and get them indestructible. So let's first talk about the Autobots he's going to lead in this deck. I did mention some of these in the Optimus Prime deck because they fit in the colors. Again, the main focus of these Autobots is the fact that they are in line with the colors of Ultra Magnus and that they're Autobots only. We're not adding Decepticons into this list just to add more flavor to it. You're more than welcome to add more Decepticons into this, but I just would think it'd be a perfect opportunity if you were in a commander game where everyone was playing a different commander like Megatron, Optimus Prime, Soundwave, and Ultra Magnus. I think that'd be really fun, honestly, and I would definitely want to go for that all the way. So some of the Autobots I did mention before in the Optimus Prime video, I had Prowl, Stoic, Strategist. Also, I did have RC, Sharpshooter, and Ratchet, Field Medic. These don't really go in line with our game plan of our commander, but they are great fits in here because they kind of do their own little thing. But I do like Blaster Combat DJ and Blaster Moral Booster as well. He just has that great ability of non-token artifact creatures and vehicles you control have modular one. So we definitely want to beef up our creatures so that I think it get indestructible with the backside of Ultra Magnus. But I do really like the backside of Blaster as well because it does have modular three and, and you may pay X and tap it. Move X 1-1 one, one counters from Blaster onto another target artifact. That artifact gains haste until end of turn. If Blaster has no 1-1 one, one counters on it, convert it, activate it only as a sorcery. So again, th this definitely screams a morale booster like what he's trying to be. So I think this is a great fit in the deck especially if we want to go hasty with a lot of our artifacts i do think a lot of these transformers have a lot of commander potential but i decided for all these deck techs to focus on the three color commanders because you could definitely fit in a lot more transformers in those perspective decks and kind of get a better feel about it instead of just having one transformer for the commander and not really having any other transformers after that so i feel like i kind of went more that route to be honest because i wanted to get more transformers in all the decks so let's move away from all these transformers let's get into some magic cards that are great fits in this deck. I thought of the Kamigawa cycle where there are equipments also on top of being artifact creatures like Tanuki, Transplanter. This absolutely has a great ability whenever it or an equipped creature attacks add an amount of green mana equal to its power. So obviously what you're trying to do is reconfigure it to Ultra Magnus so that you can get 7 mana floating in the air. I know it's going to be only green mana but it's still really good considering that you can get 7 mana just off of this triggered ability. So I think this is a great include in this deck. I also thought of Kominu Battle Armor as well because it, equipped creature does get plus two plus two and have menace so that's really great abilities for our commander to swing it for damage and also when it deals combat damage to a player go to each creature that player controls so then when they get goaded they won't be swinging at you they'll be swinging at other people and you can keep on swinging into that same exact person to get le commander lethal damage if you wanted to. I also did want to throw in Lizard Blades and Rabbit Battery. They're both really great utility cards. Lizard Blades giving any creature double strike or itself double strike for reconfigure cost of two and also rabbit battery giving a creature haste and plus one plus one as long as you reconfigure it with one red mana so these are perfect for the deck because they are all artifact creatures another really great reconfigure card i feel like i put in almost all my white decks because it does have a lot of graveyard hate is lion sash you may pay white and exile target card from a graveyard 
If it was a permanent card, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Lion Sash. And you could also equip it to your commander so that it could get extra beefy as well to swing it for lethal commander damage. The reason why I do have a lot of these lower CMC artifact creatures in the deck is because we want to have some value. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do have a lot of beefy creatures to cheat in this deck, but I thought if you have a small hand, you might as well cheat in any kind of artifact you do have in your hand. That kind of fits the situation. I do like a lot of these for that situational pieces. So now let's talk about the big chonky creatures that we want to add into the deck because there's a lot of great chonky creatures in my opinion that we could throw in there and do some damage for sure. I thought of the Gear Hulk cycle from Kaladesh. I played these a lot in standard, but these are really great to add into the deck because we can cheat them out. We have Virtuitous Gear Hulk, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk, and Combustible Gear Hulk. They all have great ETBs. Virtuitous Gear Hulk making any creature we want bigger with distributing four 1 1 counters on any target creatures we can control. I do think Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is an all star in this deck because it counts as an artifact and a creature. Because of that ETB, each player will choose an artifact and creature and enchantment and a planeswalker among the non-land tournaments they control then sacrifice the rest what's incredible about this is because we do have artifact and creature typings on here so we could save cataclysmic gear hulk and our commander at the same time and if we have any enchantments or planeswalkers whatever about that that's fine too i do however think combustible gear hulk will be really great in here because when it enters the battlefield target opponent may choose you to draw three cards and if he doesn't have you draw three cards you mill three cards then combustible gear hulk will deal damage to that player equal to the total mana value of those cards. So I hope your opponent has some life insurance because he could get a lot of damage dealt to him because we have a lot of high CMC cards in here. So what are those high CMC cards you ask? We do have Scion of Draco. I think this is a really great card in this deck because we are running three colors. So because we are in Naya colors, our creatures will either get Vigilance, First Strike, or Trample. Because we have a lot of Chonky Boys, I think this is a great ability giving our creatures Trample, First Strike, and also Vigilance so that we can keep on swinging and defending our home base as well. I also did think to add Meteor Golem as well because when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. So nice, simple, sweet to the point. If there's a pesky Ristic Study or Smothering Tithe or whatever kind of or annoying creature to deal with, this kind of solves all your problems right here because it can destroy about anything besides lands. Also another pretty fun card to have in the deck if you don't run a lot of non-creature spells is Nullstone Gargoyle. He reads flying and whenever the first non-creature spell each turn is played counter that spell so this is definitely a headache for a lot of those control players as well because they can't counter your stuff and also they can't remove your stuff as well unless they play a second spell on top of that spell they originally played so move over blue we control the board now also controlling the board and making sure that we have a dominant hand in the game we could cheat out some more cards like blight steel colossus you could easily take somebody out if they don't have any creatures to block with because it does have infect and it has 11 total power so be warned you may get some people salty. I also did think of adding Platinum Imperion and Platinum Angel in this deck for many reasons, but honestly, I like these because they kind of help us win the game even though we are down for the count and we've been beaten up by a lot of aggro decks. We have a way to make sure that our life total can't change and we can't lose the game and our opponents can't win the game at the same time. So I think these are great includes as well. Lastly, I did want to mention Angel of Ruins because you're going to be cheating it out. You could exile up to two target artifacts or enchantments on the battlefield, or you could also so plane cycle this for two if you're running low on mana so this is another great include to cheat in and also get some value out of it so because a lot of high power creatures are entering the battlefield we might as well add terror of the peaks and warstorm surge they both have that ability of whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control you can deal damage equal to that creature's power to any target so absolutely insane here especially with the high amount of cards that we have in here that have huge power you could almost take somebody out if you have this online say for example you're swinging with your commander and then you put in platinum imperium you'll be swinging in for 15 damage on top of that extra eight damage with terror of the peaks or war storm surge it's just absolutely crazy how much damage we could do with this deck if we want to utilize some cards like these so i want to thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video of ultra magnus tactician i think there's a lot of crazy stuff you could do with this commander and i probably haven't even scratched the surface of what he could do but let me know down below what are your thoughts about ultra magnus tactician i would love to hear them. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button because I do have a goal of getting a thousand subscribers by the end of the year so thank you for supporting the channel and again thank you for stomping by.